Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Legacy 1K hosted by Chimera Gaming. We are in the semifinals match, and we've seen both of these players earlier in the tournament. We have Daniel playing Boros Initiative on player one side, and we have Jacob playing Patchwork Stumpy on player two side. Earlier in the tournament, we saw Daniel play against, um, I think what I called it was Yorion soul herder and he was a, a play a little shakily on that one there's a lot of cards that you know we haven't seen before like even i haven't seen before i had to look up a couple cards during that i'll put a a title card so that you guys can view that video if you guys are interested it was a very interesting list and it won pretty wholeheartedly against borrowers initiative although daniel was a little bit unlucky on some mulligans on player two side, we have Jacob piloting Patchwork Stompy, which is an oldie, but a goodie. We haven't seen it do very well ever since the printing of Orcish Bowmaster. Back then, the deck was going by eight cast. Now it's shifted a little bit away from those um, thought cast and thought monitor type effects. And it's focused a little bit more heavily on the Stompy variation, where it very heavily favors um, hands with Patchwork Automaton. It is a very hard to deal with threat because it does have Ward 2 to give it a little bit of a protection by itself. But both players are seeking to do stompy things. Both are Ancient Tomb decks. We're going to see Daniel, like, if you haven't seen Initiative, then um, I'm assuming that you are new to Legacy, so I will do my best to describe most of the plays. If not, you guys are familiar with both of these archetypes. Initiative has been an extremely powerful deck ever since its breakout with the uh, White Plume Adventurer in one of the larger, I think it was like an SCG event. But Acast has also been uh, a very prevalent deck ever since Modern Horizons 2 with the printing of Thought Monitor. Being able to just have so much card advantage while also being able to interact with your opponent on several different axes those being chalice of the void and force of will while also being able to upkeep its pressure and pressure and critical mass with a plethora of different um types of threats so those being recursion with emery lurker of the lock or really really big threats like kappa cannoneer and very you know hard to deal with threats in uh, Patrick Automaton. So those are kind of the key cards that we're going to be seeing um, supported by a cast of, you know, the disruptive elements, which are Chalice of the Void and Force of Will. Sometimes there's Force of Negations. Um, not a ton of onboard removal for either of these decks, although Boris Initiative is a little bit geared better towards the removal suite because they do have Solitudes and Touch the Spirit Realms in the main board. However, both of these are targeted abilities and will struggle a little bit in the early game against a Patrick Automaton. So we're going to get started and we're going to see Jacob in the top seed. He's going to deploy a lot of his um, affinity type style or affinity list. Affinity strategy, I don't know. Seat of the Synod into Bobble, Lotus Petal, and Emery Lurker of the Lock. Uh, he's Jacob's just going to crack the Mishra's Bobble to get some extra cards in hand. The cards that he milled off of Emery were Mox Opal, Patrick Automaton, Chalice of the Void, Urza's Bobble, and he added that Mishra's Bobble in um, after casting that Emery. We're going to see Daniel. He mulliganed to five, unfortunately, but this is very expected in a initiative list. He did top deck a Lotus Petal, so that might help him cast a really, really... Um, hard to deal with threat or something that puts a lot of pressure onto the board. However, we do see that he does have the Chalice of the Void. Chalice of the Void typically casts on one in Legacy, but against Jacob's deck, you might want to be casting it on zero. This will hinder you, however, because the Boros Initiative de deck, it does play Lotus Petals and Moxen of its own. So he has to be careful while putting this Chalice on zero. <laughs> But this will stop Daniel from being able to, you know, get extra card advantage by using Emery to recast these baubles. He can't get extra mana through Mox Opal. We're most likely going to see uh, Jacob try to cast this Patrick Automaton from the graveyard. It is just such an amazing threat. And yeah, we're, we'll see what 
Jacob opts to do. Yeah, we're going to see that patchwork come straight out. Next turn, if there's nothing in Jacob's hand that he wants to cast, he can cast a Chalice of his own um, just to kind of increase the damage of Patrick Automaton. So it does gain plus one, plus one counters every time you do cast an artifact. And that is where its strength lies. Not to mention Jacob does have an Urza Saga now. Daniel is going to play a Cavern of Souls. Can he get something started with this Ancient Tomb? Looks like he is. He's going to lose two life, crack the Lotus Petal. There's a Seasoned Dungeoneer, probably one of the best threats in Daniel's deck because it does, when it on attack, it does give itself or some other card types uh, protection from creatures. So this is like pseudo evasion, I would call it. It doesn't really, it doesn't fly, it doesn't have menace, it doesn't have like unblockable or anything. However, uh, giving itself protection from creatures does not allow creatures to block it. So initiative is going to be introduced into this game. If you're unfamiliar with the steps of initiative, the first one that everyone always triggers is you may search your deck for a basic land. Then there are two paths that you can take. And there is also a path in the, uh, uh, sorry, a dungeon in the middle that lets you switch paths halfway through. Uh, it's typically not used, but sometimes it can be relevant. But typically the path that people go down is the first path, which is forge, which is, which allows you to play two plus one or put two plus one plus one counters onto a target creature you control. Then you can, um, make an opponent lose five life, then you get to draw a card, then you can do the ultimate. The other path is scry two, make a treasure token, make a four one, and then, did I miss one? No, scry two, make a treasure, make a four one skeleton with menace, and then you get ulti. We're going to see uh, Jacob cast a shadow spear to put a counter on the automaton. And then we see a thought cast breaking the lotus petal for Jacob just to draw a couple extra cards. I'm surprised that he actually didn't just make a construct, but having those extra cards in hand gives him those points of interaction. He will need to deal with the Cavern of Souls if he wants to use this force of will, though. All right, there's another Patrick Automaton that's going to trigger the original one. Emery is going to uh, activate target lotus petal jacob going to cast the lotus petal this is going to trigger both of the automatons and the chalice of the void daniel going to remember that trigger and it's going to get countered but jacob does not care he just wants to put extra power onto the board and with every zero drop he tries to cast from his graveyard with emery he's just going to give his board plus two okay it looks like he's just gonna pass the turn his automatons aren't big enough to tussle with this seasoned dungeoneer as of yet Oh, maybe I'm lost. Is it? Yeah, so Daniel in the the upkeep, going to trigger initiative, goes down the first path like I described, going to go to the forge room, putting two plus one plus one counters on that seasoned engineer. It is now a 5-6. On an attack, it can also explore and give itself protection from creatures, as said before. This will allow him to attack into Jacob unfettered, and allows him to see the top card of his library. However, it is a pretty decent blocker, and he's looking down two Patrick Automatons, so I'm not sure if Daniel wants to be attacking in this position. If he doesn't have another threat to deploy, it could be a really, really rough spot for Daniel. I assume that Jacob will not make a token, like a construct token, on his turn with that Urza Saga. He might be floating it, uh, but... We don't know what is what is exactly in his hand. It might just be all reactive and interactive spells. Wow, it is triple force of will. Yeah, I okay, never mind. He might be making a construct. <laughs> all right, Daniel going to play the mountain that he found off of initiative. Going to drop himself down to 16. Finds another seasoned dungeoneer. So he's going to take the initiative again, which allows him to increase the room that he's at. He's going to go to the trap room makes Jacob lose 5 life. So now it is Daniel at 16, Jacob at 15. So this is a little awkward because you can't target like the two triggers both at 1. Um, the moment one resolves, because it gets protection from creatures, the other one will actually just 
fizzle because it's being targeted by a seasoned engineer, which is a um, which is a trigger, which I think Daniel just explained to to Jacob. But off of the protection, sorry, off of the attack, the seasoned engineer found a unlicensed hearse. Daniel deems it not necessary, and that allows him to get six points of damage in with the seasoned engineer. Jacob looks like he did float the mana instead of making a construct. He finds an Aether Spell Bomb, so this deals with the really, really big seasoned engineer very nicely. He's just going to crack it immediately. Emery going to be able to bring it right back, increases his board, bounce the other seasoned engineer. Um... Yeah, that's a big attack. So he's attacking for three, for seven points of damage. Brings it ties it up. They are both nine nine, and that will allow Jacob to get initiative. He searches for a basic island. Uh, he hasn't made a land drop because he does have triple force of will in hand. We don't know what he top deck for the turn. Probably just gonna play the island and pass a turn. Looks like Daniel just picked up his draw. So the downside to initiative is. Although his threats are very strong and powerful, they do cost quite a bit of mana, so it's not like he can deploy both of them out in the same turn again. Down comes an unlicensed hearse. There's a force of will from Jacob. Exiles an Emery Lurker of the Lock as the alternate casting cost. That's enough for Daniel to say, yup, you got it. So that is going to be Jacob taking game number one over Daniel. Okie dokie, here we are starting game number two. So this will be Daniel on the play. He did lose game number one, and there is no way that initiative is going to be taking the draw by choice. So Daniel needs to find a way to deal with the recursion of the Patrick Stompy list. He really fell victim to um, not being able to interact with Emery and its ability to constantly bring threats out of the graveyard and even just become like a pump engine. So if you're familiar with like modern, then you know like Affinity used to play uh, Steel Overseer. So when you have like two Patrick Automatons and those are your main threats, every turn you can cast a zero drop and you know, or cast an artifact out of your, your deck, or sorry, out of your graveyard and kind of pump your team. So it's very reminiscent to that. If Daniel can find a way to just shut down um, Jacob's graveyard, then he won't need to worry about that. However, the more that he leans into it, he needs to deal with uh, Jacob's card draw as well. It's just, a, I think it actually just might be a really rough matchup because Jacob has access to things like Psy, Master Thopterus, that can produce a 1-1 Flying Thopter whenever he casts an Artifact, and Thought Monitor both have Flying and their Evasive Threats, it's pretty easy for Jacob to take initiative back from Daniel once it's been introduced into the game. Uh, we do see that Jacob is, has a Dismember in hand, so whatever big threat or initiative threat that Daniel puts out, Jacob can deal with. Uh, but we'll see what he does against this Fable of the Mirror Breaker. He didn't have a Force of Will or Force of Negation to stop that threat. But Fable of the Mirror Breaker does really well into of getting rid of dead cards in your hand and turning it into um, very potential threats and also fixing the mana issue that Stompy decks have by constantly getting a treasure whenever that Goblin Shaman attacks. We're going to see Jacob deploy Lotus Petal into Aether Spell Bomb uh, off of a Seat of the Synod. Just going to pass a turn, pretty tame for Jacob. Daniel going to draw for his turn and uptick the Fable of the Mirror Breaker. So we're going to see if he wants to discard two cards. Looks like he gets rid of Solitude Swords to Plowshare. Draw two cards, he finds one of them is a City of Traitor. And... You're just going to go straight into combat, attack Jacob down to 18 with that Goblin Shaman. You're going to create a treasure token. There's a Lotus Petal, City of Traders, Cavern of Souls in Daniel's hand. Wow, I'm kind of... 
I'm kind of miffed on why Daniel pitched two interaction spells. I mean, I guess if he had a feeling that Jacob is going to be relying on the Patrick Stompy, they don't do well against it. But I don't know. Daniel has so much mana. He can kind of pay the ward cost. Jacob is just going to cast a Thought Cast, though, after playing an Urza Saga. Going to just play out a ton of cards from his hand. Going to find an Emery. Break the Lotus Petal to cast it. Emery going to mill. Lotus Petal, Urza's Bobble, Force of Will, Island. Not very great. Um, but there is a draw engine for Emery now. He can Jacob can crack the Mishra's Bobble. Or Emery can just bring back the Urza's Bobble. And that will net an extra draw for Jacob every turn. All right, just going to pass the turn to Daniel. Daniel going to draw, finds a Simian Spirit Guide, going to flip over this Reflection of Kikijiki. Going to attack Jacob again, down to 16, going to generate another treasure. Uh, I'm a little... Yeah, the Source of Plasher would have been done really, really nicely against this Emery Lurker of the Lock. Daniel... Going down the route that no Stompy player really wants to take, and it's going to be play Simeon Spirit Guide as a threat. Jacob going to draw for his turn, going to uptick his Urza Saga up to a 2. And I think he found the Ancient Tomb for his turn. This will allow Jacob to make constructs whenever he wants. Emery going to bring back a Lotus Petal, get some extra mana. Going to tap a blue source. Find Dismember for Ki the Fable. Sorry, Reflection of Kiki Jiki. Gonna kill it. So I think Jacob goes down to 12. He didn't tap any other sources of mana. Sorry, uh, 14. All right, four from the Dismember, four from the two goblins. Wow, and Daniel is just going to concede. He's just found mana over and over again and. Uh, that will just be a little bit of tilt. So Daniel is just going to scoop it up. That means Jacob is on his way to the finals. We will see him play against... Uh, I actually don't know who it is. So I hope you guys enjoy this really, really quick one. I'm glad to see that Patrick Stumpy is still being played and that it hasn't been completely wiped out by all the Orcish Bellmasters. Uh, we'll see if Jacob can take it home. See you guys next time. Take it easy.